Hello friends and welcome back to another Pokemon BGC 2020 Battle Series episode. My name is Lee, also known as Osiris, and today on the channel we're going to be playing a team that I have been wanting to try and put together for a long time. Now it's made up of three cores. Three? If I can count. Three cores. Um, we've obviously got the Dragapult, the Colossal, uh, the fast mode there. We've been known on the channel previously playing a very slow Trick Room Colossal. Uh, but we're playing the faster variant in this team. Then we've got a hard Trick Room mode behind that. We've got the Hatterene and the Ndidi. And then the star of the show. Not the Dusclops. But the Dusclops is a big part of it. But the Snorlax. We are playing a Curselax. Now this is a, a Pokemon, a set that was very strong in previous generations like a long time ago um, you may have come across the term curse lax and i'm not talking 2017 it's way before that um, and i think it'll actually work quite well in this format maybe not as an upfront kind of dynamax pokemon it's obviously got the option there but i think to slow games down and just be a real nuisance in the trick room you get a couple of curses up and you're gonna be hitting super hard you're gonna be tanking things because of the thick fat ability there's a lot of fire there's a lot of ice going around at the minute so helping Snorlax out and generally it is bulky anyway so that is why I put this team together it makes a lot of sense you know the Snorlax has a lot of trouble with fighting types in the format um, and we've got plenty of things to kind of put those those Pokemon up. So hopefully the team works well. It's going to be a lot of fun. There will be a rental code at the end of the episode. So you guys can grab this team. Try it out on the ladder. Be a lot of fun. And um, yeah. Let me know what you think of it. Because I always love Snorlax. Um, I tried the Belly Drum set earlier in the season. And you know I wasn't really too keen on it. Um, you can always try this with a G-Max Snorlax. I've not opted for that in this team. Because... You know, most of the time we're going either G Max Colossal or G Max Hatterene. I didn't think a third G Max on top of that. Uh, although we have got three cores, so it would make a lot of sense that we do that. So maybe later on, um, if we make a variation of this team, we'll put the G Max in there. Anyway, we got our first opponent of the episode playing a team of the Grim Snarl, Ludicolo, Aegislash, the Gengo, Hitmontop, and Togekiss. So, hmm. What's this team trying to do? Um, obviously, you've got the disruption there with the Grimmsnarl, the screens, the light screen, reflect, T-Wave for speed control. Um, Gengar probably there with Icy Wind, Sludge Wave. It could be G-Max Gengar. You know, it is available now. Um, what have they really got to get around Colossal Dragapult? Well, they have mm, not so much, to be honest, because we could get... I think the thing is, like, uh, we could get a, a G Max move off and get the the damage rolling. Um, Gengar's got to be threatened by Dragapult for sure. We got the Sash on there, so it's not we're not too worried. Okay, I'm gonna just dive in. Colossal Dragapult. Let's go Dusclops and Snorlax in the back. And um, that's the thing with this team as well. It feels very linear with what you do. It's got three different mods, but you can lead with any one of those mods depending on the team matchup, and then have the other mod in the back. Um, so it's a really, it seems super straightforward, super simple, um, like it maybe shouldn't work. We've just taken three potentially good strong cores, put them together and let's see what happens. But honestly, it's not really the case. Um, <laughs> I promise, I promise. Um, there is method in the madness and I think it should work. So we've got Gengar, we've got Ludicolo coming up up top. Um, now, really, I pro I probably would prefer to get rid of the Ludicolo, if I can here. So we'll go for the, the Surf, and then we'll go for the G-Max. The issue is, the Ludicolo maxes, um, and then takes Colossal down, okay? But that will not be the end of the world, because we just want to start the damage rolling. Because, like, really, our end game at this point is going to be the Snorlax. Uh, get the Snorlax in, under Trick Room, start cursing up. Um, and we've got Rest with a Chesto Berry, so we can actually get... We don't need to worry about having Super Berries or anything like that. Um, we can just start getting our damage rolling straight away. So, there's the Ludi. Yeah, he's coming out. Big boy Ludi. Alright, well, I mean, we're going to get decent damage onto it. It makes sense that you go for this. Um, we are going to lose Colossal, of course. But 
but it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. And uh, we'll chip the, the sash on the Gengar, which is nice. Um, in the next turn, we probably will be able to get the Gengar with uh, Dragapult anyway, so it will not be the end of the world. And like, I think having something like Dusclops in the back, so there's the Surf, doing some fat damage to everything. Um, but procs our weakness policy, boosts our speed drastically, and uh, will be the fastest thing on the, the field for at least this turn. Let's see how this goes. Curse body. Okay. Activation of that, that ability is crazy. It activates way more than I think it should. Okay, so it's not the best damage, but I mean it's decent, alright? It's not the end of the world. Now we will lose. Focus Blast. Ha! Ah. <laughs> okay. Um, doubling into Colossal. You don't really need to do that. I think you could have targeted the Dragapult down maybe there. Um, but never mind, never mind, never mind. There's the rain. So Ludi's super fast, but it's alright because we've got... Um, we do have... Oh, and it is life orb. Okay. Right. And there's the, the vocal lift damage. So, we'll get Dusclops in. Because Dusclops should take a high... It should. It should take an attack. And we could Dragon Darts here. Um, I think we're probably better off Dragon Darts. It's just that the only issue is we won't lose... Um, We probably won't take the Gengar down with the Dragon Darts, where we will with the Phantom Force. But going for a Phantom Force allows my opponent to kind of switch the Gengar out the next turn, where we could take this opportunity to get Dragon Darts out onto the field um, and get a Trick Room up. Or we could just Phantom Force. Uh, it's tricky. I mean, we could Surf as well. Let's just Dragon Darts. Um, and we, I mean, we could Ally Switch as well. But it's better off if we go for the Trick Room. If we can get a Trick Room up, that helps us out so much. Max Hail. Okay, well that's into Dragapult. I think the thing to fear here would be a uh, Taunt from the Gengar, of course. If we see a Taunt, that changes everything. Um, the Hail is going to come down. So the Ludi's not as fast this next turn. Uh, we will lose Dragapult, but it gives us a free switch. If we can get a Trick Room, it does give us a free switch into um, Snorlax. Yeah, not quite enough. Okay, but Ludi might actually go down with the hail chip. Oh, just Shadow Ball. Perfect. Excellent. This is what we want. Okay. Um, <clears throat> these two Pokemon might go down here. To the residual damage and the hail chip. So we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. It's going to be enough. Either way, the Ludi is going to be very close to going down the next turn anyway. Gengar definitely goes. Oh, it's so close. So close. Okay. Well, Gengar goes down. So, that's fine. Right. There's at least two Pokemon down. Now we can bring in the star of the show. So, I, I guess, you know, like our return isn't that bad Um, here. But like our two leads for kind of their two leads. All right, so we've got the Uga Slash coming in. Um, hmm. It's not exactly the Pokemon you want to be seeing right here because it's normally got stuff like close combat, um, things like that, which isn't ideal. But uh, we'll just go for, I mean, we will not reveal the ally switch just yet. We'll go for a Nightshade into the Ludicolo just to get rid of it. We don't want any more max moves you don't want any more rain or anything like that so let's just remove that from the field let's see what this age slash goes for we do get the curse up so that's good potentially we'll pressure the Aegislash. slash if it attacks here depends not many carry king shield though that's that's the thing like is it gonna we'll take the close combat now oh sacred sword oh that's 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 a better option there because it ignores the boosts and stuff like that so that ain't so ideal hmm that might not be your standard age slash really because uh, do we attack into it the next turn hmm 
Oh, there's Togs. Togs. Alright, well, we're going to see Follow Me. Um, now, we could pull an ally switch and a rest. Probably the best thing to do, I think, yeah. Yeah, we'll throw the ally switch out now because it starts, it kind it puts my, um, okay, well, that's, that's still super fine. So, yeah, and we're, we're getting the knowledge of the, the king shield there, so we, we know when to, ooh, and double protect, alright. I'd imagine the toga kiss to just follow me the next turn. The thing about the ally switch here is now as well, it throws a few questions into my opponent's mind about what we're going to do this next turn. Um, now, I think a nightshade and a double edge would probably get the toga kiss. That would be my guess. But do we want to concentrate a bit more down on the Aegis Slash? The thing is, we can't really with the follow me potentially there. That's the problem, right? That's the, the the whole crux of it. Like we need to get rid of the toga case before we can get rid of the age slash. Because we really ideally want to be high horsepower and enter the age slash, but that's just not going to happen. So we'll go for the double into the toga case, and then we should still have one turn of trick room left, which will allow us to get the age slash. So I don't really see a problem here. The double edge, we've got one curse up. We're gonna be hitting like a Okay. <laughs> we don't need we don't need we don't need anything else. It's fine. It's fine. And we'll take a sacred sword as well if it does come into the slot and my opponent guesses correctly. Uh but it's kind of done now because you know a nightshade's gonna be enough to take it down and we're not in any sort of danger. Because the iron head will take that pretty comfortably. Okay. So we'll, we'll expect to see a, like, how many turns of Trick Room? If we had two, it would be ideal, honestly. So how many turns of Trick Room? Yeah, we've only got the one, which isn't ideal at all. Okay, but I, we're going to be fine, whatever happens here. Now, we could curse. We're probably better off going for a curse, to be honest. Ooh, Shadow Sneak. Ah, not even, not even going for the King Shield. Okay, probably playing on the fact that we might ally switch and curse or rest or something like that. But it's fine. Like the Nightshade here will be enough to get. The Aegis Slash, and that will wrap up game one. There we go. Okay, Curse Lax got our first win. Come on. <laughs> there we go okay let's see if we can carry this on okay so we've got our next opponent of the episode you can see they are running a team of Arcanine, Duraludon, Clefairy, Venusaur, Malamar and the Mimikyu right so what are we looking at here you've got Trick Room mod with probably the Mimikyu, Malamar and well definitely Clefairy maybe not even a Trick Room mod maybe you're just going straight up normal mode and then uh, you, you rely on the Clefairy with maybe something like after you uh, to support the rest of the team. Uh, could it be Max Arcanine? Because then you can get the sun up, I guess, uh, to support the Venusaur. If not, you're looking at Max Venusaur and then Max Duraludon uh, with like the support and cast of Mimikyu and stuff like that. It looks pretty good for Dragapult and uh, Colossal as a lead, to be honest here. Um, I think I'm kind of tempted just to go that lead, to be honest. Yeah, we'll go with that because I don't really see what my opponent's got to kind of get around that. I know they've got the, the redirection with the fairy, but um, I can't stop us proccing a weakness policy getting a max Gigalith off. Um, yeah, and then if we go Dusclops, Snorlax in the back. Yeah, that works. I mean, they haven't got too much to really... I mean, other than the Malmar. Like, that's the big... That's the big thing. We want... Oh, no. Oh, no. I don't know if we locked in in time, so I don't even know if we've got the Snorlax. Oh! I hate that you, you have to press the OK button to lock in your team. 
Like all previous Pokemon games, you could just select the Pokemon and whatever you had selected when the timer ran out, it would just, it would lock those Pokemon in for you. But now, for some reason, you need to press OK, otherwise it just picks the top four, which is just, it's a little bit frustrating. Um, especially one that was like a big mechanic in the past. Um, now we've got probably Ndidi. Yeah, and Hat in the back, which is not brilliant, really. Uh, it's it's definitely not the end of the world, but it's not ideal. Um, hmm. Where do we go? Where do we go? Where do we go? Do we get rid of the Malmar first? I think that's probably the one thing that causes us more problems than anything else. So we'll get rid of that. Ah. All I wanted in this episode was to show off Snorlax. And we've been, we've been got by Timer. But I guess it shows at least an example of the other cores working together in the team. Um, so we'll see what happens here. Protect from the Arcanine, super fine. Is the Malmar going to try and go for Trick Room? I think it probably is, isn't it? Are you going to be able to take this attack? Plus two? I non dynamaxed I don't know if you're going to be able to. I feel like we'll be able to take it down. Unless it's a super fat, super fat Malmor. I don't know if it's going to be, you know. I really don't feel like it's going to be able to take this. Nope. Oh, well, I mean, we do get the crit. I would be interested to know if that took it. I would think it probably took it down. I don't know if the crit really mattered there. Um, anyway, we've got call set up, so this might be quite a quick game. Because uh, we can take down the arc the next turn, or whatever comes in, really. That's Duraludon. Okay, well, this thing's probably going to max, isn't it? Uh, we'll just Dragon Darts. Uh, and we'll go Max Flare into the Dura. Duraludon. In a heavy ball, nice choice, Mr. Trainer. And I don't know if the Duraludon will actually be able to take a combination of the Max Flare and the Dragon Darts. Like, it's even though it has Max, it depends if it's a Soul Fest or not. I guess that'll be the the question. Um. Yeah, I mean, that's a big fat chunk of damage, isn't it? That is a really fat chunk of damage. And then, I mean, the Dragon Darts. One into Arcanine. And... Uh, you, he, he takes it. He takes it. It's fine. It's fine. He takes it. Okay. So the eject button. Arcanine. Okay. Um. So what comes in? And what's a Duraludon go for here? That's Venusaur. We set the sun up. No! <laughs> okay. So, into Dragapult. That's fine. That will just proc our Focus Sash. Ah. Venus on the sun. It's not faster than Colossal. I don't think so. Break a potential Sash there. Uh... Ooh, Duraludon going to go down this next turn. Um, so, we'll just Dragon Darts again. And we will go for a, another Max Flare into Venusaur. Hope that we're faster than it. I'm kind of, I'm confident that we're going to be faster than Venusaur in the sun. I don't know though. I don't know. I've not played fast G Max Colossal. Like I've been playing Trick Room all season. That's all I've been playing. I don't agree with the Max Guard there because you go down to the residual damage anyway. Uh, we do see the Sleep Powder come out. It is into Colossal. It's not the end of the world though. Um. Get the Dragon Darts. And like I said, the Duraludon will go down to the Max Volcalith uh, residual damage. The rocks this next turn. Get a nice chunk of uh, Dragon Dart damage there. And the Venusaur is going to be very close to going down as well. Uh, one more turn. So it's pretty much game over for my opponent. Unfortunately, this lead is just just dumb sometimes. Because if you don't have an answer to it, then it, it's, it's extremely hard to get around. I mean, you can see how explosive it is from the start. You've got like... Dragapult next to it as well, just chucking Dragon Darts out. So it's a really good example of just kind of spamming a combination um, and getting around it that way. So Arcanine going to hit the field. Um, I mean, 
You can't protect Dragapult. It's going to be the, the Sleep Powder target this next turn. And we could potentially just be a little bit cheeky and switch in a DD and uh, go for it. an inch of power into the Arcanine. Just to get catch the Sleep Powder coming into the Dragapult, I suspect this next turn um, to stop any damage coming out from Dragon Darts. Well, it's not really going to make too much difference because I think, well, the, the Volcalith additional damage onto the Venusaur takes it down and then Arcanine's got like, well, it's Arcanine versus the world at that point, isn't it? So, ain't really much you can do. Oh, Earth Power. Okay. Okay. Like that. My opponent coming back into it. Slightly. Heat Wave. Um, Venus are going down now, and then Arcanine is just fodder for Dragapult, and the Sash is like super good on like this sort of build as well on Dragapult. It just gives you that security against any sneaky scarf users that are trying to kind of snipe you before you get the surf off. Um, on Dragapult, um, on Colossal, I should say. Okay, so let's go for a helping hand, Dragon Darts. I do love Dragon Darts as well. It's like it's such a cool signature attack, isn't it? It's a really strong attack as well, especially with VG. It definitely was a VG design design move, wasn't it? And uh, you do need to. Okay, well, there we go. Uh, good game to my opponent. Very quick one. Um, we got a bit hacked out with our um, choices there, but never mind, never mind. So we'll go on to our next one and see if we can get this Snorlax working at least one more time. Okay, so our next opponent, we are going up against Yu Chen, and they are playing a team of Hitmontop, Tyranitar, Dracozolt, the Sylveon, Ndidi, and Orangaroo. So, an interesting kind of concept here with my opponent. Got the Trick Room element with the Orangaroo, um, and that's about it for speed control outside of the Dracozolt that could potentially max and go for max airstreams like we not to. Um... Probably Pokemon that you're going to see Max, Dracozolt, uh, Tyranitar, maybe Sylveon. I guess it's going to be more Dracozolt and Tyranitar. So, this makes me want to go with probably more along the lines of... Hmm. Yeah, indeed he's going to be really important for us here because I think the thing that we need to keep in mind is the Orangery with Instruct. Um, could be a little bit of a, a problem for us. Um... So what do we want to do? Do we want to go in DD hat? Probably, probably a better option here. We just need to be careful about potentially a Rangaroo reversing the Trick Room turn one, I guess. Um, him on top a little bit tricky for Snorlax, but him on top tends to lead rather than be in the back. Um, So we'll see, we'll see, we'll see what we're going. I think the thing that scares me a little bit is the Orangaroo. Um, if we can kind of try and remove that initially, um, then they've really got no way to reverse the Trick Room or support their Pokemon as well. Uh, the Ndidi obviously is a bit of an issue for us um, with their redirection, which we're going to see right now. Okay. Uh... I mean, we just get the Trick Room up, right? I think that's like, that's like mission number one, okay? We get we get our Trick Room up. Um, I think we have to follow me here. We don't want to be taking anything from the Dracozolt right now. There's potential of like Helping Hand on the Ndidi. Um, And we don't even need to max Hatterene straight away. If like if we're in a decent position going into next turn, yeah, there's the helping hand. So we're gonna potentially lose our NDD. Although the hustle ability, it has got that, could come into play, and we could get a little bit lucky. It'd be nice to keep in DD for the next turn as well, but I don't see that happening. Yeah. No way we take that. Okay. But we do get a trick room up. And now the follow me shenanigans will start from the opposite side of the field. Uh, oh, that room service. 
Oh, okay. Um, let's get Snorlax onto the field because we can start going for curses, right? Room service Draco's alt. Mm. That's interesting. Super interesting. Let's G Max. Yeah, let's G Max smite. I'm gonna go into the Draco's alt. Uh, if they don't follow me, then I don't think Draco's alt's slow enough with one speed drop to under speed hat or Snorlax in a trick room. Um, I can see why it's a it's a good item, but I think you've got to pick it right. I think something more like Iron Ball will give you a better chance of under speeding, but even then, they really need to be like around base 60 speed to kind of under speed base 30s. Um, minimum speed, so I don't think, I think Dracozol's what, base 75? Just off the top of my head, I'm just trying to guess here, I'm spitballing, but I don't think it's going to be under speeding either of our Pokemon. Um, but here we'll probably see the Indeedee go, follow me, um, Dracozol. Probably go Ball Beak. But we want to try and get Snorlax set up, like tank this Snorlax. Okay, it's going to go Max. Which is better, I guess, because, I mean... Not really relying on Ball Beak then. But it's still got ridiculous power. But we might get lucky with some um, G-Max Smite confusions. We've not had the confusion hits we've uh, we've been clamoring for already today. Had none, literally zilch. So maybe this is the match. That's, that's all right. That's all right. So yeah, there's a confusion. Come on, get some hits. Hit yourself in confusion. Indeed he did. Switched out with the eject button. Okay, that's an old trick of ours. Um, well, I mean, they don't have the redirection to support this next turn. If this Draco's ult hits itself in confusion, then it's going to be really, really tough for my opponent. Let me get the curse up. Right, come on. Taking ages to get around to this turn, hasn't it? Yes! <laughs> we get it! Okay, that's huge. That's huge for us. Um, now, do we... Do we just go for the G-Max Smite into Dragon's Heart and get another Cursor? Is a question. Mm. Or do we just attack into the Oranga Ring? Right. Or do we just double into Dragon's Heart? G-Max might not be enough to get it, you see. <laughs> double into it. Double. Okay, well, we're just making sure that we're getting rid of this Dracozol here. Um, if the Oranguru tries to reverse the Trick Room, that's fine. Um, that big hit of Confusion, it's pretty big for us. But this is why G-Max Smite is a busted move in general. Okay. What's Oranguru going to do? It is going to reverse the Trick Room. Which is fine. I mean, what have they got? What have they got to come in? We've got to be careful with the instruct, of course. Ah, it's Tadranitar. Okay, but it can't max. Hmm. Probably want a G Max Smite. Um, I probably we're probably going to see. I'm going to double into the Oranguru here. Because we're probably going to see Rock Slide, Rock Slide. Oh, Super Power, Super Power. Super Power, Super Power wouldn't be ideal. Especially into our poor Snorlax. I don't know if it would be enough to even take us down, to be honest. The one curse? I guess it depends what the T-Tar's item is. But the one hit probably takes us uh, my, uh, nah, I think we take I would be confident to take that okay well we're gonna see the Ndidi come back into play which is fine uh, their sportar is gonna protect such a great name I think it's German right I think it's German um, so we'll get the confusion onto the Tyranitar which is pretty huge for us 
um, get rid of the Ndidi, and then that's the end of our G Max turns. Double Edge not going to do anything into the Tyranitar, but we're not in the worst spot ever because we can potentially try and go for a Trick Room this next turn. Um, do we even need a Trick Room like at this point? I feel like we probably do. Because the Oranguru probably goes Instruct. And I think we... Yeah, I think we go Curse. Let's go Curse. And Trick Room. Let's try. Because I think they go... They definitely go Instruct. Crunch into a hat to stop the Trick Room. Or uh, Instruct Rock Slide to get the flinches. And I'd probably go Instruct Rock Slide. Okay, well, you're going to protect. If you can get an attack off, I guess. Yeah, so there's... <laughs> I love that play. Okay, so it's protecting itself. And it's going to be able to attack as well, which is pretty good. Yeah, that's it. That is a very cool. <laughs> I do like that. I guess they were probably going for more of the... Um, more of a double iron head maybe into the hat there just to get it but it's still a very cool play right and we did flinch right well that's fine uh, I think we just attack into a Rangaroo now with the Snorlax and try and get a trick room off again I think hat's probably gonna go yeah hat will go down here do a double iron head for sure and Snorlax might not even get an attack off because we could get flinched again. Like all these Iron Head, Iron Head flinches could just continually happen. There's the Instruct. Yeah, gonna lose Hat. Snapped out of its confusion, so no confusion hits there. But we got the one one hit of confusion that was really important, right? So we can't complain. Um, I think that's fair enough. How's the Iron Head doing? Nothing. See how much this does. Wow. <laughs> it's not like too strong. Okay, well, we're going to take a bunch of recoil damage there, which isn't ideal. Um, But yeah, well, we just get Dusclops in now, and at least we can finish the episode with our Curse Lacks winning us a game. Okay? So this is this is all I wanted from today. Weakness policy on Tisa. So we've got to be a little bit careful. We'll go for the rest, and we will go for a trick it a room okay rock slide coming in with those rock slides fishing for those flinches i would get the rest so that's that's good for us so there's the rest mm -mm -mm. we chow down on that nice tasty chest of berry snorlax get all that health back there we go and the beauty about the chest of berry is uh over the lumberry it's not ideal um is that you know the Chester only, only pops up, activates on, um, we'll go for another curse and we'll go for another, we'll try the trick room once again. It only activates on sleep, so with the Lum, it activates on any stats condition, so we're really specific here. We only want it really activating on that rest turn, and it's obviously good against uh, sleep spam and things like that that we do see in the format as well. Uh, my opponent going for a crunch here. We are going to guarantee our trick room up now. We'll get another curse up, um, and... Yeah, I think the next turn to avoid avoid proc and weakness policy. I'm kind of tempted to go for um, the high horsepower, but uh, there's no need to. We don't even need to risk it, okay? We don't need to risk it. The sandstorm subsiding. We can just pay and split. And I don't. I think this is what we do. I think this is the reason why I wanted Dusclops here. So we'll go double edge, and because um, if we pay and split now, we'll be going after the the Tito's taking damage, which is no good. So we'll pay and split with our Snorlax. And that keeps our Dusclops he healthy. We're not going to get to see it. How dare you? How dare you? Anyway, friends, thank you so much for tuning in. Hope you've enjoyed today's episode. Do drop a like, sub to the channel, and I'll see you all for the next one. So until then, take care of yourselves and bye-bye.